There is a real contrast, though, between what the president has proposed and what we as Republicans have proposed. We talk about and have presented a plan that actually balances the budget. Uh, Betty, this is just not true with, with the president and the Senate. And I think if you, if you start out with the premise that deficit spending into perpetuity is okay, then they succeeded in that. But, but I'm just, I can't saddle up with that. It's not right for our children and our grandchildren. Well, to respond to that, Democratic Maryland Congressman Chris Van Hollen is joining me. He's a ranking member of the House Budget Committee, uh, often talk, talked about as one of, the one of the best budget minds for his party, joining us from the Hill. Uh, and Congressman, what, do you, what, what is your response to what Congressman Ridgell just said? Well, Betty, the president's focus uh, in his budget is on getting the economy kicked into a higher gear, and getting more Americans back to work, and reducing our long-term deficits in a steady, credible, and balanced way. Uh, by the end of the 10-year window, uh, the budget, the, the president's plan would reduce deficits to 1.7 percent of GDP, well below uh, projected economic growth then, and that results in the debt to GDP ratio on a downward trajectory. Uh, so the contrast still in the between high the two 70s, budgets though, is this... by the way. Still in the high 70s, that debt to GDP ratio, but lower than where yeah, it and, is now. And that's right, and, and, and coming down, uh, the Republican budget, by contrast, would create an immediate drag on the economy now because it doubles down on the sequester for all non-defense discretionary spending. In other words, overall, they keep the sequester levels of spending uh, in effect, right. uh, and, it, and, and, and that, according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, uh, will result in 750,000 fewer jobs this year alone. So the president's focus is let's get the economy moving faster now, reduce the long-term deficit in a measured, smart way. His, his overriding objective yeah. is economic growth both now and in the future. But, Congressman, uh, the president had said before the sequester, the budget cuts kicked in, that this would be uh, uh, you know, an absolute uh, dangerous and drastic uh, hit to the economy. And the problem is that so far, weeks into this, the American people have not felt that. So how can you make how can you convince Americans that if they go with the Republican budget that there really would be a huge drag, even a recession from that budget? Well, I'm not saying there is going to be a recession, but what we've said is it will be a drag well, some on of your economic your colleagues growth. are saying uh, that. Well, I, look, it was never the case that the sky was going to fall the day the sequester went into effect, but I can give you a real-world example from my district. I have a, the CEO of a major biotech company wrote to me and said, uh, they put, they have applied a hiring freeze as a result of the sequester. Uh, the only place they're hiring uh, is in China, not because of lower wages in China, mm. but because the Chinese government looked at the United States model of investing in bioscience and said, hey, that's a good economic growth strategy. So while the Chinese are copying our successful model uh, to our detriment, uh, we're actually throttling back. That is a mistake. Uh, so, it's a mistake to cut back on our investment in science and research and our investment in infrastructure. Things are important to help our economy grow. I'm curious, what did you say to that CEO then? I said we're working very hard to try and replace the sequester, and that's exactly okay. what the president's budget does, whereas the Republican budget, as I said, more than doubles the sequester cuts uh, in these areas of, of science and research, R&D, uh, things that have been a, a, a proven helpful strategy uh, to U.S. competitiveness. But, Congressman, there's an op-ed I referred to this one earlier, Alan Blinder, who's a very reasonable voice uh, on economics and the budget. And what he said was that, look, he gives the Obama budget a pretty good grade, but he says the insistence on revenue, on increases, tax increases, just don't reflect political reality. Well, that's interesting, uh, and I have great respect for um, Alan Binder, but the reality is what the president is saying uh, is what Speaker Boehner had uh, said to the president in their earlier negotiations. Not the total amount of additional revenue, uh, but remember, Speaker Boehner, uh, during the December negotiations, talked about a trillion dollars in revenue. Uh, the president... Uh, through the fiscal cliff agreement uh, had about six hundred billion dollars in revenue so even if you were to take speaker boehner's proposal mm -hmm. from last december that's another four hundred billion and speaker boehner said you could get it by closing and limiting limiting ex tax expenditures uh... for high-end individuals and and mitt romney talked about finding trillions of dollars right. um, in revenue now he was going to apply every dollar of that uh... to rate reductions 
but every bipartisan commission has said, let's take some of that for rate reductions, but let's take some of it for deficit reduction. All right, Congressman, I'm going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. Congressman Chris Van Hollen. Thank you. It's good to be with you.